Да, всем привет. Напоминаю, что у нас есть такой замечательный yeah, hello, guys. Код, по которому вы можете использовать интересующие вас вопросы, если они появятся. Рассказа. Итак, как сказал Алексей, существует like Alexei uh, said, такие, такой класс решений, как there is this, uh, class of solutions xdr as ndr and xdr and they're often used as sensors and uh, there is also a web application firewall which is also a sensor in a way because they can help you create logs and analyze them now i'm here to tell you why WAF needs these logs name is alexander chernikov I'm the head of uh, web analytics at uh, CyberArt SOC, uh, which is operated by Inner Stage. In my work, I often, see, uh, I often hear that WAF is uh, not important for SOC. Like, it's there, it's part of the box, you know, it's uh, apparently working and blocking something, but nobody really cares. However, if we check the figures, we will discover the following. On the left, you see stats coming from MTS Red for 2023. 46% of all attacks were targeted at web applications. In fact, this share is growing. Well, because it's uh, kind of easily available. You know, it's exposed to the internet. 14% increase compared to 2022. On the right, you see statistics collected by positive technologies. So PET analyzed all successful attacks in 21-23. So you can see that like 52% of all successful attacks were targeting web applications, which is pretty dreary, right? And I can tell you that it is corroborated by your own statistics as well. You know, the number of attacks uh, targeting web applications or, you know, at least malicious uh, activities has been growing and will continue to grow. Now, we have developed the following model. The way we see it, the analyst should be looking into three, shall I say, windows. One is WAF, where the analyst can set up a log format, develop some additional rules for preventing well-known attacks, uh, for example, where in a vendor uh, doesn't publish a patch uh, in time for a well-known vulnerability and so on. So WAF can help you collect three types of uh, data points, so to speak. Now, one is the request log, another is attack log, and finally correlation log. Now, the attack log will show what's, uh, what has matched the signature analysis uh, done by the WAF. And the correlation log will go to CM for more advanced analytics and correlations analysis. So the stuff that got segregated at the WAF level inside CM will become a proper large-scale correlation. So it won't really generate uh, too many FPs. And uh, this stuff will go to SOAR for response, such as IP blocking. For example, if we're talking about some interesting services where accounts can be blocked, well, that's another option for you. So SOAR is the main window where your analyst will be looking. Based on our experience, we've identified uh, three popular strategies around WAF. One is uh, install and forget. When you have like a small web application, it uh, doesn't really support any important business functions. You've installed it, it's running, nobody remembers really about it. And, like even if it goes down under DDoS, it won't really impact business continuity. Another one is having a statistical model. When you have like a fleet of uh, different web applications that uh, supports a particular business process or business function. So, for example, you've got a bunch of users working with the service that support them. There, you will need to have like an analyst who will develop a statistical model based on, say, logs and requests like I previously said. 
вдруг было все нормально. And you know, he will, for example, discover this, uh, you know, 500 code uh, responses, which means, you know, something must be wrong with the application, so it needs to be investigated. And the third one is the advanced level, so to speak. This is where we want to be. If the client has got a large fleet of uh, web applications that uh, support like the main function, think about a bank, for example, or a retail company. Now, in a case like this, you will need a dedicated team uh, which will understand your business processes inside out. They will understand how the application is running and what the endpoints are that could be potentially attacked by a perp. And they also develop, you know, correlations and some complex rules to, well, to address the current expectations, so to speak, of the market and the business. So let me share some specific cases related to this third strategy, so to speak. Now, the first case, I felt like calling, please call me. So we have a bank, and naturally, there is a web page uh, in the bank where you can submit your loan application. You submit your data, and then a call center agent calls you, and you discuss the terms. Now, hackers have uh, started overloading the server of this bank by sending, you know, too many app requests there, or rather SIN requests. And, you know, it was a way of increasing load on the server, but also on the employees of the call center. Now, this request for a short message or short uh, text uh, dispatch itself is uh, nothing malicious, right? So it won't be seen as something malicious by the signature analysis. However, our analyst came in, came up with a rule, and then employed a statistical model and their own correlation. Now, they did two aggregations. Uh, one starts like this, you know, if over a short period of time from a single IP address, you are getting lots of uh, loan requests. Now, that's really weird. You know, human beings don't do that. Like, it's uh, very unusual that like 300 people will apply for a loan at the same second, <laughs> let alone using the same IP for that. Now, what you see here is all, you know, correlations getting triggered. Now, another correlation is uh, exceeding the number of uh, loan requests uh, featuring the same phone number. So this way you can, for example, automatically block an IP address. Or doing something else, do something else if you believe, well, proper people don't do that. Now, the second one is a post request to the roots. So imagine you have an application and uh, there is a remote access to this application because your company, for example, deals with lots and lots of contractors and they all need this particular application. Now, what we saw was a correlation getting triggered as the total number of uh, post requests coming in, uh, you know, the threshold was uh, increased or was um, exceeded rather. So that uh, it does look like a particular DDoS uh, attack pattern. So the, the body of the request was pretty heavy, 12,000 characters in each, and lots and lots of requests like this coming from diverse IP addresses. So over an hour that this attack was up and running, you know, the classic legitimate uh, GET requests were 30 times fewer than such POST requests. So we identified the pattern, we called the developers, we asked them if they were feeling okay, they said no, it's not how we designed it. Like, we developed a, a short rule which would block this POST request. We fine-tuned it, naturally you want to fine-tune those rules on a regular basis, and we deployed it in the production system quite in time. Because, uh, as you can see, you know, pretty much at the moment we deployed it, you know, the attackers started getting serious and, you know, the number of such requests was uh, getting to the range of 5,000 per minute. So had we not responded in time, I think the application would have been downed.
So the third case is a web application that a user can access, get registered there, get some, you know, loyalty points, get more points, and then exchange these points with some preferences. Now, these preferences could be maybe cards or, you know, some monetary payouts. So, perps have started registering lots and lots of illegitimate accounts, trying to maximize their remuneration. We have noticed that over the past 24 hours, the number of uh, registrations from not too popular um, email accounts, such as uh, gmail.com, bk.ru, these are popular mail services. But now you see FTH Capital, which is uh, not certainly a well known email service provider is speaking. So it turned out it's a British company which got bankrupt two years ago. It's non-existent now, but their mail domain is still out there. Fortunately, we had correlations up and running that would look for numerous correlations related uh, numerous registrations correlated with unusual domains. So the perps weren't able you know, to do anything that would result in financial harm to the company. You know, it's so easy to buy this stuff on dark web. So if you consider these three cases, you will see that speed of response can be critical. Moreover, they show that WAF logs are interesting, so it's a good idea to have people at your SOC analyzing them, maybe at, uh, you know, maybe on the 24 by 7 routine, thereby protecting your business and protecting your revenue. Thank you so much. Unless you have questions. Yes, thank you very much, Sasha. Now, what are you collecting? Is that access log or what? I've mentioned already there are three main logs. One is the attack log, something that's you know recognized as the attack pattern access log, as you suggested correctly, and correlation log. Usually, it's written down as uh, you know the separate log. Also, an error log which shows issues that uh, the WAF itself, the web application, is experiencing. So it's the four logs that we're usually using. Okay, thank you. And uh, by the way, question about case one, why should we do it through WAF if uh, it looks more like incre uh, ex exceeding the threshold? So it must be a developer bug, so to speak. Well, before the developer introduces any changes in the app itself, we need to protect the company, right? It can take um, two weeks, three weeks, it can take even longer. So we need to make sure that the bank doesn't waste money sending those useless SMSs. So we were able to resolve it at the WAF level, saving the bank millions. Of rubles. How can we use the attack log of WAF in correlation with CM if 90% of attacks are actually blocked by the WAF itself? That's a good question. On the basis of these attacks, we have developed a set of our own tags. For example, SQL injection is obviously an attack. That's a very malicious move. But, you know, the fact that, say, a user, you know, user's machine has not been able to probably, you know, show the page, uh, that's bad, but it's not really an attack, not necessarily an attack. And using these tags, we can identify attack sources, and then using SOAR or other tools, we can block specific addresses uh, such uh, in such a way, effectively stopping the attack.